We are showing up to find some exact values of trigonometric expressions. Let's go to the board. So if you wanted to find the exact value of a trigonometric expression like this, for example, sine of pi over 4, you might be tempted to just grab your calculator, punch it in, and see what you get. Odds are you're going to get some weird decimal number, unless you have like a really good calculator that's going to tell you the exact value. And so what I want to do in this video is show you how to find the exact value of trigonometric expressions like this without using your calculator. Now, in a previous video, I showed you a very crazy hand trick that you can use to find exact values of trigonometric expressions. And literally all you need is your hands. So for this first example, I'm going to apply that hand trick just because it's so wacky and I just love using it. So if you haven't checked out that video, be sure to do so now. Now, if you don't know the hand trick, you're going to have to use one of the special triangles to solve this problem. And honestly, I just can't stand these special triangles because I can never remember them. So that's why I always fall back on this hand trick. But if you are a special triangles person, what you could do is just look at the special triangle that has pi over 4 in it, and that will be this one. And you'll see that the sine of pi over 4 is just opposite over hypotenuse. Looking at this triangle, we can see that this is going to be 1 over root 2. And you remember that sometimes we write that as root 2 over 2. Right, we don't like to have roots in the denominator, so sometimes you'll see it written like this. Now to use that special hand trick, you're going to take your left hand and you're going to label each finger with all the special angles in your triangle. You're going to start at zero. This will be 30, 45, and so on. For the purposes of this problem, we're working with pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. So you put that 45 degree finger down, and you look to the left of that finger. In this case, I have two fingers left, so I'm going to take the square root of 2, put that in the numerator, and divide by 2 to get the exact value of sine pi over 4. I absolutely love this trick, and like I said, if you haven't watched that video, be sure to check it out now because it is completely mind-blowing. All right, so let's take a look at a harder example. In this case, we're looking at the cos of 5 pi over 3, and right away you should be able to tell that 5 pi over 3 isn't just an angle from our special triangles if you take a look at them. You're not going to find an angle of 5 pi over 3 in either of those triangles. So what we do is we think about what 5 pi over 3 looks like on a unit circle, and I'm just going to do a quick sketch so we can see what that looks like. Right, so if I start at 0 and I rotate my terminal arm around, I have to figure out where 5 pi over 3 is. Now you could convert 5 pi over 3 to degrees and just draw whatever angle that you get. If you do that, you're going to get 300, which if we start at 0 and we rotate counterclockwise, we're going to end up in this quadrant right here. That's an angle of 300 degrees. Typically, I find that converting to degrees is the way that people tend to prefer graphing an angle on a unit circle. So that's what I've done here. Okay, so I know that this angle is 5 pi over 3, and that just leaves me with this little missing wedge right here. Now that missing wedge is what is called a reference angle. And a reference angle is just going to be an angle that we know some stuff about that we can use to understand more about this cos 5 pi over 3 expression. Now you might be wondering what the value of that reference angle is going to be. And it's actually pretty easy to find. If you think about a full circle here, we know a full circle is 360 degrees or 2 pi. Since our terminal arm is already rotating through an angle 5 pi over 3, all we have to do is take 2 pi and subtract out that 5 pi over 3 angle, and whatever's left is going to be our reference angle. Now since I've already gone 5 pi over 3s around, if I go another pi over 3, that's going to take me right back to 0 degrees, and that would be a full rotation around the unit circle. So our reference angle in this case is going to be pi over 3. And that should be exciting because pi over 3 is a special angle. So pi over 3 as a reference angle is going to help us find the cos of 5 pi over 3. And you can do that using either your special triangles or you can grab your handy hand rule. Taking a look at an angle of pi over 3 on these special triangles, you'll see that the cos of pi over 3 is 1 over 2. If you want to use the hand rule, you know that pi over 3 is an angle of 60 degrees. So we're going to go 0, 30, 45, 60. We're going to put that finger down. And remember with cos, you need to look to the right count the number of fingers and take the square root. So that'll be one. We're gonna take the square root of one, which is one, and we're gonna divide that by two, which is two, right? So we know that the cos of pi over three is gonna be one over two. All right, so you're probably wondering how all of this is gonna help us find the exact value of the cos of five pi over three. Because it isn't enough to say that these two are going to be equal. This angle is down here in this quadrant, whereas an angle of pi over three is actually up here in this quadrant. Now there's a handy rule you might know a little bit about called the cast rule. And the cast rule essentially is just a summary of where all of the various trig expressions are positive. So we say that all of the trig ratios are positive here, only sine is positive here, tan is positive here, and cos is positive here. And we're actually in the C quadrant, so all of our cos expressions should be positive. And that's enough to tell me that the cos of pi over 3 being 1 over 2 is actually also going to be the value of cos of 5 pi over 3. So we can say that the cos of pi over 3 is 1 over 2, but also 
the cos of 5 pi over 3 is also going to be 1 over 2. All right, so that one was definitely a lot trickier than the first example. Let's take a look at another example just to reinforce some of these concepts. Again, in this case, we're looking at an angle that isn't immediately present in your special triangles. 2 pi over 3 is not exactly a special angle, but there is a pi over 3 there, so that's kind of a hint that you're going to be working with a pi over 3 angle again. And so we're going to take a similar approach where we're going to draw what this angle would look like on a unit circle. And again, you can convert this to degrees just because sometimes I find that to be the easiest way to understand where this angle is on the unit circle. In this case, it's actually an angle of 120 degrees. So that's going to be over here, right? Just after 90 degrees, but also before 180 degrees. So we'll say that this is 2 pi over 3. But remember, we don't really know anything about 2 pi over 3. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a reference angle that we can use to sort of understand this cos of 2 pi over 3 expression. And in this case, this reference angle is going to be pi over 3 because we're missing this little wedge here. And we know that rotating from 0 over to here is going to be pi. So if I just take that pi and I subtract out 2 pi over 3, I'm going to be left with pi over 3. So I'm going to call that my reference angle in this case. All right, so we're going to use that reference angle of pi over 3, find out what the cos of pi over 3 is, and use that to understand what the value of cos of 2 pi over 3 is. And remember, you can do this using special triangles. You can go to your special triangle and look up what the cos of pi over 3 is, or you can use your hand trick. If I use my hand trick, I know that pi over 3 is an angle of 60 degrees, so that's this finger. We're going to put that finger down. We're going to look to the right. We're going to see there's one finger and take the square root of that finger and divide by 2. Right, so that'll be 1 over 2 again. And again, you can use your special triangles if you don't like the hand trick. So is that enough to conclude that the cos of 2 pi over 3 is also 1 half? Well, not exactly. We have to check that cast rule again. Remember, the cast rule says that only sine is going to be positive in that quadrant. And since I'm working with a cosine expression, I know that whatever the exact value of cos of 2 pi over 3 is, is going to be negative. But because we've already done all this work with our reference angle, all we really need to do is say that, well, the cos of 2 pi over 3 is going to be the exact same as the cos of pi over 3, but we're going to make it negative. So we can say that the cos of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 over 2. All right, so we looked at a sine example, a cos example, a hard cos example. Why don't we take a look at a tan example as well? We're going to apply the exact same process here. We're going to look at that angle. And we're going to say, well, that's not a special angle, but 4 pi over 3 has pi over 3 in it, and pi over 3 is a special angle. So we can draw 4 pi over 3. We can find the reference angle and analyze it to understand the exact value of tan of 4 pi over 3. In this case, 4 pi over 3 would convert to 240 degrees, so I could quickly sketch that as being down in this quadrant here. It's a bit more than 180, but it's less than 270, so we say that that is our angle, 4 pi over 3. Now looking at this diagram, you can see that you have this wedge right here. That guy right there is going to be our reference angle, so we need to figure out what the measurement of that angle is. Now remember, at this point, our terminal arm is sitting at 4 pi over 3. We know that if we rotate our arm around this way and stop here, we've gotten to pi. So if we subtract out that pi from 4 pi over 3, that should leave us with our reference angle. And so doing that, 4 pi over 3, take away pi, you're going to end up with pi over 3 again. So our reference angle, again, is going to be pi over 3. So we're going to apply the same process. We're going to ask ourselves what the tan of pi over 3 is, because we know stuff about the tan of pi over 3. We can grab our special triangles, or we can go on to our hand trick. Remember, with your hand trick, you're going to go over to pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. You're going to put that finger down. And with tan, you're going to take the square root of the number of fingers to the left and divide by the square root of the number of fingers to the right. So in this case, we're going to end up with root 3 over root 1, also known as root 3. So the tan of pi over 3 is going to be root 3. But is that enough to conclude that the tan of 4 pi over 3 is also root 3? And the answer to that is going to be no. We don't have enough evidence yet. We have to check our cast rule. Remember, the cast rule says that over in this quadrant, only tan is going to be positive. Well, since we're working with tan here, this is enough to say that the tan of 4 pi over 3 is going to be a positive value also. And because of all of our work with this reference angle, we can say that the tan of 4 pi over 3 is also going to be root 3. All right, so that's four examples for you on how to find exact values of trigonometric expressions. Remember that all you're really doing here is analyzing a special angle, and you can do that using whatever process you want to use. The new part here is adding in that reference angle idea, as well as using this cast rule to check whether the expression you're working with is going to be positive or negative.